the insane benefits of turmeric. Now, if you've ever had a curry dish at an Indian restaurant, you probably consumed turmeric. It's the classic spice that gives curry its yellowish orange color, and it's been around for thousands of years. Not only does turmeric taste great, but it's also a nutritional powerhouse. Scientists still uncover benefit of turmeric every year, and it's pretty impressive considering how long it's been around. It's a relative of ginger, and turmeric has been used in both Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine for centuries. For those of you who don't know, Ayurvedic medicine is one of the world's oldest holistic medical systems that originated in India. Now, turmeric's main ingredient is curcumin. Now, the benefits of curcumin, it's a potent polyphenol. And you've heard me talk time and time again about the benefits of polyphenols. But we're uncovering more about how polyphenols work, and in particular, the polyphenol that curcumin is. First of all, you could take a big hunk of turmeric that you bought at the grocery store and throw it in your smoothie, and quite frankly, it's not going to do much of anything for you. Because like most polyphenols, turmeric is horribly absorbed from our gastrointestinal tract. So please, don't waste your money on turmeric root unless you're just looking for the flavor that turmeric root imparts. That's okay. But turmeric by itself, curcumin by itself, isn't going to give you the benefit you want from that polyphenol unless you take certain additional steps. Now, once you make the polyphenol curcumin available by having your gut bacteria work on it, or by taking a compound that's present in black pepper called bioparin, it's much more readily absorbed. Now, it's an amazing neuroregenerative compound. In fact, a study done in Singapore a few years ago showed that people who ate curry once per week had a 90% reduction in dementia compared to people who didn't eat curry. So turmeric's in curry, but guess what another ingredient in curry is? If you guessed black pepper, you're right. So how did the ancients know that they had to combine these ingredients? They knew. How did Hippocrates know 2,500 years ago? that all disease begins in the gut, he knew. It's taken us 2,500 years to catch up with him. But it's fascinating to me that black pepper and turmeric are two of the main components in curry. And curry is great for your brain. Turmeric probably inhibits lipid peroxidation. And if you listen to me talk about cholesterol in general, Cholesterol is not bad for you. Cholesterol is not interested in clogging up your blood vessels, in sticking to your blood vessels, unless it's oxidized, unless it's rusty or rancid. And if it's rusty or rancid, then it has the potential to stick to your blood vessels. And turmeric, curcumin, is one of those polyphenols that limits peroxidation of cholesterol. There's some interesting studies about joint pain being lessened by turmeric. And as I mentioned, preventing neurodegeneration is a wonderful thing. Also, curcumin has some very interesting anti-cancer properties. This has been studied actually extensively at the University of South Florida in Tampa, at Tampa General Hospital, in people undergoing resection for pancreatic cancer. Some groups were given large dose turmeric before the operation. Other groups were given a placebo. Placebo, the turmeric group, had reduced amount of cancer at the time of resection. Turmeric actually inhibits cancer growth in multiple studies. So have your turmeric, have your curry. Now, a word of warning, particularly to my female listeners. Several of my female patients notice bowel issues, changes in their bowels following turmeric consumption. So if you notice adding turmeric in the form of a capsule or in powders is changing your bowels, first of all, give it a little while. Turmeric actually changes the microbiome, and those changes sometimes appear as changes in bowel movements. 
but if you are still bothered by it, it's not essential for your health. Now, there's a very interesting study, speaking of women, of looking at the effect of curcumin on BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, with women with PMS. So the participants were randomly assigned to a placebo or the curcumin groups. Each group received two capsules daily for seven days before menstruation and for three days after menstruation for three successive menstrual cycles. The curcumin group, the first, second, and third cycles after the interventions, BDNF went up significantly compared to the placebo group, and the mean scores of PMS symptoms were significantly less in the curcumin group than the placebo group. So, if you've got PMS, if you want to help your brain during that premenstrual period where you notice a difference in your brain function, give curcumin a try. And it's powerful stuff. Now, the good news is it's readily available and easy to incorporate into any diet. So you'll find it in powder form. You'll find it in capsule form. You'll find it in fluid extracts. But word to the wise, unless proven otherwise, make sure that you see a bioavailability profile of the capsule you're going to buy. Or at the very least, look at bioparin as one of the ingredients in the label. There are other ways to absorb curcumin using nano-encapsulation that I like a lot. But in general, look for the word bioparin or look for an actual curve of bioavailability of the supplement you're going to buy. The last thing is you can add turmeric to any dish, make it much more interesting in flavor. It adds a wonderful color. You can put it into a stir fry. You can put it in a coconut milk turmeric latte, but do me a favor, sprinkle in a little black pepper wherever you put it, and you'll boost the uptake of curcumin. Turmeric is big right now. Everybody wants turmeric lattes, turmeric smoothies, turmeric everything. Why? Well, the active ingredient in turmeric, that root that looks a lot like ginger, except it's orange colored, curcumin, can actually help in the management of oxidative and inflammatory conditions. In fact, strangely enough, these compounds, these antioxidant compounds that we eat, and we think about them as anti-inflammatory compounds, unfortunately, most of these don't cross the blood-brain barrier. Turmeric is actually one of the few exceptions. We know that turmeric does cross the blood-brain barrier. Why is that important? Well, if you like the concept that brain health, dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's is directly related to neuroinflammation, inflammation of our neurons, then turmeric, with its ability to cross the blood-brain barrier, may be a winner and a winning spice. Now, turmeric has also been shown to boost energy levels. It does that by actually boosting mitochondrial function and, in fact, can repair mitochondria by uncoupling mitochondria. How about another one that most people really only think of about once a year, and that's at Easter, and that happens to be cloves. Cloves, interestingly enough, are the, have the highest polyphenol content of any spice. Now, I've written and spoken about polyphenols throughout my career. Real briefly, polyphenols are produced by plants in both their leaves and their fruit and their seeds to protect the leaves, fruit, and seeds from hostile environments, from sunlight, from predation. And these polyphenols, we now know, protect the plant by uncoupling their mitochondria. Simplistically saying, tell the mitochondria, don't work so hard, don't damage your cells, don't get affected by oxidative stress. And it's called mitochondrial uncoupling. When we eat the polyphenols, 
that are very, very high in spices, two things happen. Number one, recent research shows that polyphenols are one of the preferred prebiotic fibers of our gut microbiome, our gut bacteria. That means the more polyphenols we eat, in this case in spices, the more our gut buddies, the good guys, improve their diversity, improve their lives. The second thing we now know is that polyphenols, like I mentioned curcumin, are very poorly absorbed. But our gut microbiome can actually eat them and then turn those polyphenols into absorbable compounds. And when those polyphenols reach our mitochondria, they have the same effect on our mitochondria that they were used for by the plant to protect its mitochondria, and that is they uncouple our mitochondria. Now, uncoupling mitochondria, if nothing else, actually helps you lose weight. And it's no surprise that people with diets high in polyphenols are actually, in general, much thinner than people who have diets that are very low in polyphenols. And we'll talk about that a little bit further. Now, in terms of spices, cloves are the highest. Turns out that in the Middle Ages, during spice trade, cloves were the second most popular spice and the highest price spice behind saffron. The number one spice was black pepper. And among other reasons, black pepper contains that compound, bioparin, that actually uh, helps you absorb the polyphenols in spices. So it was a win-win proposition. I think you're gonna love this one. Two and a half eggs meet your entire protein needs every single day. 